had this vision of I'm not supposed to cry. I'm a man. Right. I'm not supposed to share my emotions with anyone because I'm a man. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to go to therapy and talk with anyone because I'm a man. To say mm -hmm. you need to isolate. You need to be in the dark. You need to to not share what's going on for you because then I can make you ineffective. So if I'm resisting sadness, if I'm resisting jealousy, if I'm resisting anger, those things are going to persist in my life. I just be okay with being sad. That sadness doesn't last. The times that I had a really hard time was when I would be sharing and talking about what's on my heart and you're showing no emotion. Be with those emotions and cry with me because of the pain that was there and you were experiencing it and walking with it, walking with me through it really made me feel connected to you. And, and so I needed to go look for help on my own. Like what was going on for me in the background? Um, what was going on for me that I needed secrets in my life? And there will be questions for you. There are probably going to be a lot of questions, some effective, some not effective, but there's probably going to be a lot of questions. The root of why it will resurface again that is because he did choose to do that. We got to walk this journey of discovering why together. Hey, I'm Travis. And I'm Adele. And we are The Noble Marriage. We hope that through our channel, you will be inspired and motivated so that your marriage will be all that God created it to be. Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. This series that is all about how Travis processed through alongside me as I was walking through grief from the marriage that I thought we had. And if you have walked through betrayal yourself, I believe listening to this video as a couple, I think will really help both of you get a lot of healing, insight, clarity, and just realizing you're not alone. You know, one thing that I've really resisted through my life, specifically as a man, is working through emotions. Mm. I think that's a common thing and it's also with women too. I did it myself. Really? Mm -hmm. And being able to be okay with whatever emotions I have. Like I had this vision of I'm not supposed to cry. I'm a man. Right. I'm not supposed to share my emotions with anyone because I'm a man. Mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to go to therapy and talk with anyone because I'm a man. It means you're broken. I have no idea where that came from, but it is false. That Well, I, I'll tell you where it comes from. Come from hell. <laughs> it comes from hell. That's Satan. That is Satan trying to say, you need to isolate. You need to be in the dark. You need to, to not share what's going on for you because then I can make you ineffective. Small. Small. Sick. And that's exactly what happens. However, whenever I process my emotions, whenever I am like, oh, I'm feeling this going on for me right now. And I'm okay with whatever that is and not trying to resist it. Because what I resist persists. So if I'm resisting sadness, if I'm resisting jealousy, if I'm resisting anger, those things are going to persist in my life. However, if I am able to sit with sadness and, oh, I'm feeling kind of sad today and this is what's going on for me and I share that with you and I just be okay with being sad, that sadness doesn't last. It processes through, the emotion goes, and then I'm on to my next. However, anytime I stop them or I resist them, it persists. It keeps going. Mm -hmm. Another way that people say this is what you fight builds strength. Mm and it's so true. I think what was healing for me in that is there was something that was um, connecting with you when I saw you experiencing your emotions during that time. The times that I had a really hard time was when I would be sharing and talking about what's on my heart and you're showing no emotion. Yeah. It feels like, are you with me? Are you hearing me? What's going on for you? And if you weren't sharing, it was making me feel a whole kind of way about what I had going on. Yeah. 
And when I really saw you shift and be with those emotions and cry with me because of the pain that was there and you were experiencing it and walking with it walking with me through it really made me feel connected to you in a way that I would have never expected to happen. And it made me look forward to the times that we spent processing through and talking and trying to figure out how we ended up where we were. Those times were we were getting to know things about each other and the walls right, right. were down and it was just so powerful for my healing to see you show emotion and be okay with that. And a lot of times I would ask you what's going on for you. And you would say, I just have a lot of regret for doing this to you. And it just made me feel seen. It made me feel like you were, you're hurting too. And hmm. you're not just like, what's wrong with you? Why are you hurting so bad? Aren't you done with this? Yeah. So it was really, really powerful for my healing as well. Hmm. So obviously, if, if you are the betrayer and you are giving full disclosure to your spouse, there will be questions for you. There are probably going to be a lot of questions, some effective, some not effective, but there's probably going to be a lot of questions. So in my experience, I sought out as much as I could ways of getting healing and answers for myself because some of your questions i didn't know the answer to and so i needed to go look for help on my own like what was going on for me in the background um what was going on for me that i needed secrets in my life and why would I, was i making the choices that i was making in my life and i couldn't readily answer those for you but i know you wanted to know you may be relating to this and and up until discovery you have not thought about why you made the choices that you made and what i want to share with you just from what we have discovered about relationships and life is that when you don't deal with the root of the problem the root of why it will resurface again in your life. And that was really powerful for me because I was asking him a lot of questions. I had a lot and, and I think I only probably asked him like 30% of what the questions were in my mind. And a lot of his answers were, I don't know. And it infuriated me. I, I'm like, how do you not know? How? And I could not wrap my mind around that. And I think I got to the point where I was numb to hearing, I don't know. And I had a lot of more questions around, is his, I don't know, I don't want to share? Is his, I don't know, um, really, I don't know? Or I'm choosing not to look? Like, I didn't know what I don't know meant. And it made me angry. And what I have discovered is that he really did not know. He had not done the work to figure out how he made those choices in his life and why. And what was the purpose of the path that you took in your life? And he jumped on that. Because I was asking so many questions, I, I was like, you're going to have to figure out why on some of these questions because I don't know, it's just not, not going to work. Yeah. And you immediately sought help for that. Yeah, I did. I immediately sought help and got a therapist who specifically related in sexual related, uh, issues. And it was so helpful for me to be able to process and talk and get some of my things out and be able to hear back some guidance and some, uh, therapy with with him um, mm -hmm. I read multiple books um, went on a long healing process to discover who I was and really learned a lot about my past and my the reason I did the things that I did mm -hmm. 
And what I, what's been so cool about that is because he did choose to do that, we got to walk this journey of discovering why together. So I know all the answers to my questions now. And not only that, I have empathy and compassion and love and understanding for exactly why you did everything that happened. Hmm. And it was so helpful for me to realize that while I added to the marriage and while I added to the problems that we went through in our marriage, your choices had nothing to do with me. Oh yeah, right. That's and that cool. was powerful for my healing yes. because I don't know if you have been betrayed and you're watching this, but I wanted to take it all on. Mm. I wanted to make it all about me. What's wrong with me? What does she have that I don't have? I'm not good enough. I'll never be enough. And those kinds of things keep me from healing. And so seeing him really discover himself and how he got to be the way that he was, or how you got to be you, gave me so much clarity on how we got where we got. And it gave me hope. It gave, it gave me a new life to try to figure out like, okay, we know how we got here. Now, how do we not repeat these right. things again? Like, what do we need to put in place to protect our marriage moving forward? And it's so powerful for healing. And so, so get the help you need to help you discover you and why you made the choices that you made. So definitely get the help that you need. And as an additional resource, we'll link a video up here about the top four questions not to ask your spouse. Pretty helpful. So we have some requests. If this video made a difference for you, we would love to know what that is in the comments below, as well as you may have some ideas yourself that helped you walk through something and it would really benefit the people that are watching this to hear what you have to say as well. So put that down there. Also, we would love it if you would subscribe to our channel and follow this journey. Check this out. Here's what's coming up next week. After the discovery or the disclosure, your spouse is going to be on a roller coaster ride of emotion. I need to release the expectations that I have. We mentioned earlier of how, how you should heal and how you shouldn't heal, and maybe a time frame of when it should be, or how your roller coaster should be. I've got to release those expectations mm -hmm. because it's her. And just knowing that those roller co coaster emotions are not about something you did in that moment. Yeah. And every So as the betrayer, there could be an opportunity to put blame on your spouse. Did this. Yeah, if you would have done this, if you wouldn't have done that, if you did this, I wouldn't have done that. And I'm 100% responsible for the actions that I committed against you. Yeah, because I can promise you, as the spouse that was betrayed, I was already doing, I was doing a lot of blaming myself as it was. Mm -hmm. I must have done something wrong to deserve this. I must not be pretty enough. I must not look good enough. I must not have what it takes. Start looking at what were the things that I contributed to. Because you were lowering your walls and taking responsibility, it made me feel safe to own up to how I saw myself showing up in the marriage and my own fault. But I can promise you if you would have blamed me, that would have not happened because I would have been protecting myself yeah. and putting walls up because of the blame. We'll see you then. Bye!